Morning guys and welcome to Sunday School this uh, Sunday morning. Uh, it's good to be uh, with each and every one of you. I uh, hope that you've had a, a great week and a great weekend. Uh, we've got another uh, good lesson today. Uh, we're still in Daniel. This is going to be our um, last chapter. This is going to be our last lesson in Daniel until we get into our uh, new books and we'll be passing those out uh, shortly for you. Uh, so that you'll have those. Uh, but today's lesson is called Not Your Average Dream. And this is going to be talking about Daniel and his uh, vision through his dream that God had uh, revealed to him. Uh, and we're going to be uh, talking about that today. And we're going to be in Daniel chapter 7 uh, today. And our family theme says God reigns uh, forever. It says that we need to know that earthly rulers will rise and fall, but God will judge and Christ will reign uh, forever. Uh, it says that we need to think uh, that I will, the think part says I will serve God with hope looking forward to Christ's eternal reign uh, and what we need to do is confidently confidently live for God and share the news that Christ will reign uh, forever so through all of these things and uh, the main theme uh, again the theme is God reigns forever so we're going to be talking about these uh, this vision this dream that Daniel uh, has uh, in chapter 7, this prophetic uh, dream that he uh, has, uh, and we're going to go through that, uh, and it's going to be talking uh, about that. But first, it says, the first six chapters of Daniel deal with the various events we have recently reviewed. Uh, the remainder of the book deals with intriguing dreams and visions that he received in today's last, uh, that he had received in today's last study in Daniel. We will look at one of those visions. So that's what we're looking at, and this is uh, verses uh, 1 through 8 and 15 through 17 it says earthly rulers and empires will rise uh, and fall so in in Daniel's vision in this chapter 7 um, it's going to describe um, uh, four great beasts uh, or animals uh, really it's only three uh, animals and then one <clears throat> uh, that's not resembling any particular animal okay so the first one uh, that we're going to see is going to be a lion. Uh, it's going to have wings, uh, and then it's going to be talking about a bear, uh, and then a leopard uh, that has uh, two sets of wings, and I believe it's four heads. I may have got that wrong. And then again, the other one not resembling uh, any particular type of animal, but uh, just this beast, uh, this nation that's going to be rising up. Um, this last one was more fearsome than the others, and that's the one that's not represented by an animal. Okay, uh, The vision showed that God was ruler not just of the current events in Judah and Babylon, but also of future events in the whole uh, earth. Uh, Daniel wants us to understand that none uh, of that is beyond God's control. Nothing is uh, uh, beyond God's control. We have to know that God, uh, he, is, uh, he is over everything. Um, he knows us. He knows what's going to happen. Um, he is in charge, okay? And we need to understand that. God knows all our days from birth until death. He knows who we will have as neighbors. Uh, he'll know who we will have as friends uh, when we get jobs, uh, co-workers. Um, he'll know who we're going to have as our teachers, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, but life holds many discoveries for us, but none of it takes God uh, by surprise. So, uh, these visions that, that Daniel is having, I'll just read in verse 4. It says, The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Uh, I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart uh, was given to it. Uh, in verse 5, And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself uh, on one side, and it had three ribs in its mouth of it between the teeth of it, uh, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Um, and then in verse 6, After this I beheld and lo another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion uh, was given to it. So I was right about the leopard. It had uh, four wings uh, and four heads. Uh, and then in verse 7, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth that devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts uh, that were before it, and it had ten horns. Uh, 
okay? Um, can you imagine just thinking about that, what this, what these uh, beasts look like, the lion with the wing, the eagle's wings, and the bear with the three ribs in its mouth, and um, the leopard with four wings and four heads, and then uh, this other beast that had uh, that was dreadful and terrible. He was really strong. He had uh, great giant teeth and um, all of this. Uh, he had and ten horns. Okay, uh, so try to get a picture in your mind on uh, what these beasts look like. Um, I bet you can come up with some pretty uh, some pretty neat things. Uh, but through all this, it says that we need to stand firm in faith, knowing God knows the future. Uh, and is in control. It says sometimes life seems out of control. Bad things happen every day and t at times bad things happen to good people. Uh, there's constant news of death, war, political issues, drug problems, and natural disasters. Uh, we're having natural disasters right now, right? Um, the hurricanes that have came through, um, the wildfires, uh, the things going on in our own country and around the world, the pandemic, uh, the riots, all of these things that are going on around us. Uh, political leaders in our country and around the world fight about uh, problems never seeming to do anything about them, right? We see it all the time uh, on news. All they do is want to fight back and forth between each other. All of these things can be frightening, especially when there seems to be no answers and things will more than likely get a lot worse as we await uh, the return of Christ. So all of these things that uh, that sounds familiar in today's time, right? Uh, that's what's going to happen. But uh, but God knows everything uh, that is going on. He has a plan for the future, and He is in control, okay? And we have to put our faith and trust in Him, knowing that He is in control of all of these things. Uh, and if we put our faith in Him, then we don't have to worry about uh, these things, okay? Uh, because God is in control. We can stand strong in our faith because we trust in the only one who sees, knows, and has control of our individual futures uh, and our future in general. So he's the only one uh, that knows. He's the only one that can help us get through this. Why? Because he is the one in charge. Okay? He is the one in charge. So no matter what's going on, um, he is going to see us through. But we got to put our faith and trust in him. Okay? Uh, this next part says the fourth great ruler and kingdom will rise up against God uh, and his people. And this is verses 19 uh, through 25. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it says Daniel especially feared what he saw from the fourth beast and wanted to know more about it. Uh, the horns in biblical imagery represent power. So remember this beast uh, had ten horns. Okay. Uh, and that represents ten centers of power. Uh, one of them overcame three others and apparently ruled over the remainder. Uh, the explanation Daniel received indicated this fourth kingdom would indeed be different from the others. Uh, one way in which it would distinguish itself would be its thirst for more than just political and military power. Uh, it would make war against God's own people. Okay, So it was going to be bringing war uh, against us, against the Christians, against the followers of Jesus Christ. Um, verses 20, or verse 20, it says, And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other uh, which came up and before whom three fell, uh, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look uh, was more stout uh, than his fellows. And then if you skip down to verse 23, uh, it says, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom uh, upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, uh, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue uh, three kings. Uh, <clears throat> So that was the explanation of what these horns are going to do and who these uh, kings or kingdoms are going to uh, be established. Um, and we've seen some different things uh, since the time of Christ. Many rulers have followed this pattern. Uh, we've seen it um, the uh, Germany, the Soviet Union, uh, Communist China, North Korea, and many others um, have, you know, they've kind of followed in those patterns and done, you know, terrible things. 
Uh, at times it seems that God's enemies have the upper hand. Um, and sometimes, you know, um, it seems like they do. Um, sometimes the bad guys win, um, but it's only for a while, okay? Uh, we think that the bad guys win, uh, but it's just for a little while. Uh, yet the time of evil's prevailing will come uh, to an end. One day it's going to come to a complete end. Uh, God always has the last word. We can take comfort from Daniel's message that the time of such distress uh, is limited and subject to God's authority. Uh, God is in charge. If we know through everything that God is in control, he is in charge, uh, he knows the future, he knows what's going to happen, and in the end, who wins? We do. Uh, Satan and all the evil uh, will be defeated uh, because God is in control. Um, he's going to have the last word, uh, and we need to hang on to that uh, reassurance uh, to know that these things that are going on uh, in, in our life right now is just for a short amount of time, okay? We may think that it's a long time here, but when we, have, when we make heaven our home, that's for eternity, okay? And God is in control, and God is going to take care of all these things. But we've got to put our faith and trust in Him uh, and not worry. God's people should be prepared uh, to surf, suffer uh, persecution. When these things happen, uh, we're going to go through uh, some trying times. Uh, we're going to go through persecution. Um, you know, we're for the most part right now, Christians are being persecuted um, all over the world, okay? Uh, and it's just going to get worse. Uh, as society becomes less Christian, we can expect more and different kinds uh, of persecution. And that's what they're trying to do now. They're trying to take God out of everything. They're trying to take prayer out of everything. Uh, they just want to do away uh, with Him. Um, and you can see uh, the things going around because they're, wanting to, they're taking Him out of everything. Uh, it's just total chaos and destruction and all of these things. Um, but we as Christians have to hold on to the end. Uh, hold on, endure, hang on to God. Put Him first in our life. Uh, put our faith and trust in Him, and we can endure till the end. Okay, that's what we have to do. Um, preparation to, uh, to face persecution is both mental and spiritual. We need to recognize the importance of knowing exactly what we believe uh, and why we believe it uh, so we can stand firm uh, on our beliefs. That's why it's so important uh, to have these Sunday school lessons. It's why it's so important to come to church and learn and hear uh, the teachings and the preachings and it's so important uh, to open your Bible and read it for yourself and study it uh, so that you will know uh, what the Word of God says and that, and so that you can stand on those things, the things that you believe in. Um, you don't know, you're not going to know what you believe in unless you pick it up and read it for yourself. Um, you can sit there and you can take my word for it or Brother Jeff's word for it or uh, whoever else may be standing up there teaching or preaching or whatever, uh, but it's important that we get in and dig into God's Word uh, for ourselves so that we have an understanding uh, ourselves uh, and know what it means and so that we can have a firm understanding, a great understanding um, of what it is and we can stand on those things when it um, when people ask us uh, questions and ask us why we believe it. Uh, we can tell them. We've got to be prepared. Uh, to do that. Uh, we also need to pray continually, study the Bible, and memorize scripture. Right. Uh, the Bible tells us uh, to pray without ceasing. What does that mean? It means to con continuously be in prayer. Okay. Um, study the Bible. Memorize scripture. That's what God is wanting us to do. Uh, that's what we need to do. Uh, if we are a child of God, if we are a Christian, uh, we'd want to do those things. To, and th by doing these things, it gets us closer to God. Okay, and our, if our focus is on God, uh, if our focus is on God and we're doing these things, praying continuously, studying our Bible, memorizing Scripture, putting God first in our life, if we're doing those things, uh, then we're not going to be distracted by the world uh, around us, the things that are going on in this world that are uh, just chaotic and um, get our minds off of Him, all the negativity that's going on. Uh, that's why it's so important to stay focused on Him and make Him number one in your life. Okay, and if we do that uh, and know that God is in charge, know that He's going to take care of all of this, um, then we're going to be we're going to be we're, we'll do good. Okay, we'll be better off if we do that. 
Uh, this last part says, God will sit in judgment and Christ will reign uh, forever. So we've got to know that uh, things are going to be okay. Why? Because God reigns forever. Okay, He will reign forever. Uh, this comes in the last, uh, this is going to be talking in 9 through 14, uh, verse 18, verse 22, and verse 26 through 28. Um, God will not permit the conflict of kingdom against kingdom to continue uh, forever. So he's not going to allow this to go on forever. All of this uh, negativity, all of this bickering back and forth, all of this nation rising against nations, um, all of this sin, it's going to come to an end. He is going to have enough, uh, and he is going to send his son Jesus back uh, to come get us. Um, and it will come uh, to an end, and God himself uh, will judge uh, from his throne. Okay, uh, What mankind saw as Jesus' defeat on the cross turned into victory at his resurrection. Uh, Daniel's mention of the books were opened in verse 10, seems to find a uh, book end with John's vision uh, in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12. So this is like, uh, you know, tying in to Revelation. Uh, God will not only judge righteously, he will also punish evil and its servants. The judgment and punishment will set the stage uh, for God's everlasting rule where his people can uh, possess the kingdom forever so that we can make heaven our home uh, for eternity. Okay, He's setting that stage uh, and he's already paved the way for us to get there and that was through his son, uh, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross for our sins. Uh, Daniel foresaw the time when Jesus would not only receive the kingdoms, uh, of the whole earth, but would also graciously share them uh, with his people. God will wipe away all tears, and his people shall reign with him in a kingdom uh, that shall never know defeat. Uh, man, what a time uh, that we'll have when we get there. No more tears, no more pain, no more suffering, no more sin, no more temptations, um, no more sickness, nothing. Okay, we'll be made whole. Okay, uh, it's going to be a wonderful time, and I hope that's uh, what your goal is uh, in life, uh, is to make heaven your home. Um, <clears throat> God will wipe away all tears, and his people shall reign with him in, uh, in a kingdom that shall never uh, know defeat. God has plans of his own, uh, so to speak, and he will not see them uh, fail. Uh, God has a plan for each and every one of us. He knows the future. He knows what's going on. He knows exactly the time uh, to put a stop to all of this, okay? Uh, and his plans uh, never fail, okay? Uh, and we need to rest assured uh, in knowing, uh, and that comes through faith, okay? So we've got to have faith. It says that we need to rejoice and have hope, knowing we will reign forever uh, with Christ. Uh, thinking about the, uh, the future and the judgment and the end times and persecutions, um, it's kind of, you know, depressing and can be kind of scary, right? Uh, that is why these are not popular topics on, you know, on social media or the media, uh, TV shows. And, um, you know, we're not going to be throwing birthday, having our birthday parties themed after uh, these things, okay? Um, but we can celebrate because we know the outcome. Regardless of what happens, how it happens, or even when it happens, we know that Christ will be victorious. We know, if you've read uh, the book of Revelation, you know uh, that we as Christians, that we know that Jesus comes out on top and he wins, okay? Uh, he's going to reign forever. He comes, Christ will be victorious. Uh, he's the winner, and he... Uh, and that means we win as well. If we're a child of God, then we are on his team. Um, and in the end, we will win too. Uh, we need to know that Jesus will be the forever king. Uh, he will reign and he will be right. Uh, when that time comes, evil uh, will end. All of these things that are going on that we uh, face uh, in today's times, uh, all these heartaches and strifes and all of these different things, they'll come to an, they'll come to an end. Uh, there'll be no more bad news. Uh, there'll be no more persecution. Uh, there'll, again, there'll be no more tears, no more sickness, no more uh, death, no more of anything that's bad, no more temptations uh, to do bad things. Um, that's going to go away. That will come to an end. Jesus' followers will live forever uh, with the king uh, who died to save them. 
uh, we will be able to live forever with Jesus uh, in heaven, worshiping him uh, every single day uh, that we're up there. Uh, that is the re that that is a reason uh, to rejoice. Okay, knowing that if we endure to the end, if we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, um, that no matter what's going on in this world around us today, that if we endure to the end and put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, uh, then we can make heaven our home, and we can uh, where there's no more pain, no more sorrows, no more sickness, no more tears, uh, no more bad things, just happy and joy, uh, being around the throne uh, of Jesus Christ. Um, it's going to be a wonderful day. Um, I know that uh, we don't want to go uh, right now. We still want to be with our families uh, and our friends and our loved ones and all that. Uh, but just knowing that one day after a while, uh, if we are a child of God, uh, that uh, we can have uh, that joy uh, by making heaven our home. And I hope that's your goal. Uh, if it's not, it can be. Um, all you have to do is ask God to forgive you of your sins um, and trust in Him and ask Him to come into your heart uh, and lead your life. Uh, if you do that, if you accept Him as your personal Savior, then you too uh, can make heaven your home. Um, and then share that uh, with others as well. Um, so I hope that you have a great uh, rest of the day. Uh, I hope to see if you are able to come to church uh, this morning. I hope to see you there. Uh, but I love each and every one of you, and I'll see you soon.